seven steps that you need to take when you're seeking forgiveness. The first thing that you need to do is what Jacob did is you need to take responsibility for yourself. Verses 1 through 3. In verses 1 through 3, we see Jacob doing exactly that. Now notice the contrast with how Jacob had handled the situation before. Before, he was just doing whatever he could to protect himself. It's found in Genesis 32, verses 13 through 21, and he goes on and talks about how Jacob, this is when he had sent his, his family on across the river, and he'd sent all of his possessions on, and he was there by himself. But it explains what, what was being done. And he said from what he had, he had selected a gift for his brother Esau, 200 female goats and 20 male goats and 200 ewes and 20 rams and 30 camels and their young and 40 cows and 10 bulls and 20 female donkeys and so forth and so on. Man, he was sending this stuff on and on and on. And he gave them to his servants and he said, look, when, when, he, when Esau asks one of these four, tell him that it's, it's, it's from Jacob, that they're a gift and that I'm coming behind and hopefully he will accept these as a gift and it will appease him. That was what Jacob, Jacob was trying to manipulate, trying to control the situation himself. But now we see something very different. Now what we see is that he's protecting the others. And he makes himself very vulnerable. Before he was just protecting his own hide. Now he's protecting all of the others. He puts the children and the maid servants and the wives and everybody. He puts them in a whole separate, and then he, verse 3 says, he goes along by himself. He goes on by himself and faces Esau and the 400 men. Now he is vulnerable. Now he's just confronting the issue. He's not trying to manipulate it and control it. Now he's just confronting it and saying, look, i got to get this right. I need to make this right with you. What an incredible example for his wife and kids. That's what just blows my mind. What an amazing example for his wife and for his children to see him act that way when, when their father needed forgiveness. And his employees also, by the way. What a statement to Esau and his men. Now, don't think that they didn't know that Esau at one time had wanted to kill Jacob. I'm sure that conversation had been, they'd been talking, they talked about that around the fire campfire a few times. Oh yeah, he stole my inheritance. I'm going to scalp him. Now, there's a whole different picture, a whole different thing that's happened. Now Jacob is coming before Esau, and he's bowing before him. In fact, he bows before him seven times to get forgiveness. So the first thing that we see, the first thing that has to happen when you have to approach somebody to seek forgiveness is that you have to take responsibility for yourself. The second thing that has to happen is that you need to include your world. Now, notice how important this is. In verses 5 through 7, we see this, this amazing thing that uh, after they've met and they've hugged and they've wept, Esau looks up and he sees the women and children and he says, Who's this? What's going on here? What is this all about? And Jacob introduces his world to Esau. Listen, the one who needs to forgive you needs to understand you better. The one who needs to forgive you needs to understand you better, why you are who you are and the way that you really are. Don't set up your defenses and not let them into your world. Include them in your world so that they understand a little bit more about you. Include your world. Open up your world to the person that needs to forgive you. Step number three, verse eight. Reveal your intent. Reveal your intent. In verse 8, he says, Esau said, what do you mean by all these droves that I've met? And Jacob said, look, I just want to find favor in your eyes. I just want to be right with you. Be honest about this. The person that you are seeking forgiveness from, just go to him and just say, look, I need to be right with you. I've offended you. I've done something wrong. This is the most dangerous thing that you can say when you're seeking somebody's forgiveness and you watch somebody's body language and listen to their words. And this is probably the worst thing that you can say. If I've offended you. What kind of a cop out is that? I'm not saying I have, but if I have, I'm sorry. Oh, please. That's not forgiveness. That's not seeking forgiveness. Forgiveness is, I've offended you. 
Not if I've offended you. I've offended you. And I need to be right with you. I have heard it so many times. I've heard it so many times. I've heard public confessions, you know. Well, if I've offended you, I'm so sorry. What kind of a what kind of a request for forgiveness is that? It is, I have offended you. That's why I'm even coming to you, because I know that I've offended you. And you may be surprised that it may not be as offensive to that person as you may think it is. But the fact of the matter is it's offensive to you. You realize that you need forgiveness. So why, why sugarcoat it? Why say, you know what, if I hurt your feelings, I'm really sorry. No. I believe I've hurt your feelings and I'm sorry. I believe I did something that was offensive. It was offensive to me that I did it, and I need to be right with you. Be honest. Talk about your intent. My intent is to be right with you. And be so forthcoming with what's, what you know is the reality of the situation. Don't sugarcoat it. When you say, if I've offended you, what you're saying is, I'm not really sure that I have, but if I have, you know, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's not real. That's not real repentance, if you will. Forgiveness means that you recognize that you have violated somebody, that you have offended somebody, and you need to make that right.